Good morning and part two of my providing ser mortuary services. I just left the, it's the next day, so I just left the funeral home. And what happened today was, because I did the makeup yesterday, and so what happened today was someone or some people or people from the family comes in. Sometimes it's the same day you do this. A lot of times it's the next day. They come in and they give approval of the work you've done. I like to be present when that happens because I don't want to get a call from the family and I'm somewhere doing something else that they need this adjusted or that probably wasn't the correct lip color or that's too much blush or they didn't wear that much makeup or not enough makeup or too unnatural, etc. So when you're called to do these services, always request the latest photo, the latest photo of, a, of the person that you'll be servicing. Always get the latest photo of them and work with the family to find out, is this what you want? Is this the look you're aiming for or something a little more natural, a little more dramatic, what have you. So... That's what just happened this morning. The family was very pleased with the work I've done. Yeah, it was a situation to the where there was going to be a wig placed on the person. And yesterday when I left, the wig wasn't on just because of the situation. Just because of the situation, I left the wig placement to the funeral home. A lot of times I can just call someone in the funeral home someone who works there and they can help me get the wig on the head but in this situation they did it themselves and it was very very good very good work so in my kit i keep makeup of course foundations i have better luck with um powder mineral powder foundations um when i do use liquid i use one of those brushes with a flat handle and you kind of mop it on like that it's not a basic makeup brush. It's nothing like this. It's nothing like this. It's one of those ones with the handle and you would put it on like that with cream and the deceased. Any cream or liquid foundation, I have to use that type. I find that type of handle brush is easier for me. Someone else might have a different experience, but for me, that's the best one to use. Um, I just keep my foundations and I have a little kit that I carry with me just for that. So I keep the foundations, a blush, basic eyeshadows, uh, volumizing and lengthening uh, eye or mascara, hairspray. Especially if the person's already dressed, then you can go ahead and spray the hair. You just want to protect their clothing. And sometimes the funeral directors will go over that with you. But I always use like a long tissue esthetician's. Or something, you, when you go to the dentist, something like that, I always drape that over them so I can spray. Because you want to spray, you want to spray to hold their hair in place. Some people have a, a viewing one day and then the next day is a service. So you want to make sure their hair is protected. Um, the last thing you want to do is get up in front of visitors, uh, friends, and start making adjustments on the person. So you want to try to have everything taken care of before the general public shows up. The family can sometimes be okay with that, doing little touch-ups, but then I try not to do that in front of them also. It's just never a good look. So, again, I just did the um, once-over or the final approval with the family member. They were very pleased. Um, in this situation where I am, if the person has insurance, then the funeral home pays you, or sometimes the family pays you, but this is where I'm at. This is where my heart is. When a family calls upon me, and I know this is probably 15 to 30 minutes worth of work. Sometimes I make it two hours because I'm so picky and particular about a person. But when a person calls me, the last thing they need is to be hounded about money, about you know providing final services for someone. I'll tell y'all, and this is like those kids say, oh, my mama, I'm blessed. I might not be where I want to be. But I'm not where I could be. So in that right there, I'm okay with providing a service and 
not bothering a family member because a lot of them are just good people they'll go ahead and take care of you but sometimes some situations this death is never planned so sometimes you know some people are just not in a position to lord now i got to pay this girl because she did go down there and do the so-and-so's hair well did they make up i don't be going I, I don't get i don't get messed up over that if i'm so if i feel like i'm so blessed and i'm blessed no, I don't have a million dollars in the bank. I don't live in a, a five-acre house. I don't. But I am blessed. I'm here talking to you right now. I'm better than blessed. So, therefore, I can bless somebody else. And that's how I look at a lot of things in life. Girl, I wouldn't be doing no hair for free. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't. I would have charged. I would have da 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 I am blessed. And I don't have a issue, an issue, with blessing somebody else. So... My no, my little takeaway from that little piece right there, be a blessing. Just be a blessing to somebody. So to get back on track, final um approval from the family is okay. The funeral home satisfied. She's all, her services is to, are today and everything's good to go. So that's my little take for today. Have a good day.